feeling I'm especially excited to show you to announce that my book uh, Spark in Action uh, version uh, uh, so the second edition covering Apache Spark 3 uh, has been released and uh, is now available at any good bookstore or online at Manning and um, the paper the paper version is is coming like in a few in a few days but if you place orders right now you will get it really really soon and uh, it's been a, a, a huge effort effort for um, like three years now and over three years and uh, um, it's uh, it's it's a huge book it's like uh, 500 almost 600 pages it has almost 200 uh, illustrations and lots of examples uh, it's the examples in the books are in are in java uh, but in the repository on github you will have examples of course the java code the python code the scala code uh, i used um i used real life examples um like it's not your you know it's just a basic data sets with colon one two three with value a b c it's real stuff like restaurant data like nasa satellite da data um and you will build uh you will understand the basics and you will understand more than the basics you will be able to build full pipelines uh and full data pipelines i'm i'm really excited but that it's uh, uh there's a lot of work that's been this in this in this book um not only for me, I had a I had a whole team. Uh, I I wrote the book. I'm the author. Of, okay, but the thing is, there's a lot of team of people, whether at Manning, the publisher, or reviewers, that really helped me um, make this book. And and it has an incredible rating on Manning website. We have at five stars now. Um, and uh, and that that's that that's really that's really great. To have these people supporting me and helping me during this this whole uh, journey of building this book, uh, you, you can see some of the quotes online here, like uh, Rob Thomas from uh, from IBM, and author of the foreword is saying this book reveals the tools and secrets you need to drive innovation in your company or community. I think that's a great quote. Uh, I'm also I cannot you know I cannot not uh quote marcus marcus says that this book is currently the best book on the subject okay so why can't you do anything if you want to learn spark um this this is definitely a, a great book and a great resource and so as you can imagine today's uh data friday is going to be on on spark of course and we are going to look a little bit at guess what metadata and schemas okay so maybe there's a bit of a continuation from the previous episodes of data friday uh maybe not okay so let's 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 get out of the advertisement part um and make sure that um that we cover we cover some interesting code here okay um the code we are going to explore today is coming from uh, Oops, uh, chapter three from the book. Okay, so let's let's close these things now and first have a look at it. And uh, so I am going to ingest a file and I'm going to show you the file right away. And after I ingest a file, I'm going to modify its schema. Okay, why? Because the schema that is originally coming with the file does not fit my expectation. Okay. I want to apply some data quality rules, for example, or I want to apply to start transforming the data. And if I if I keep adding the same schema that is forced on me by the source, by the provider of the data, then my code will be extremely dependent on on on, on their goodwill to keep the schema. And as you can imagine, it never really happens. So um, let's 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 look at the data first. Okay, so. Uh, I'm going to look at restaurants in Wake County, in North Carolina. Uh, Wake County is the county where you find cities like Raleigh, or oop, I don't, I don't want numbers. Sorry about that, guys. Um, well, we could, we can look in, in numbers. That, that's fine. Um, 
the the way county is having cities like raleigh north carolina which is the capital of the state Cary, uh wake forest all these springs etc and we are going to look at restaurants okay like uh, for example wava on ellsborough street in raleigh uh phone number etc uh it's a type of restaurant it's uh you've got the coordinates and and all those things see and the, and the schema you see the schema here it's there okay i've got object id hsi hsii cad whatever here name address one address two city state postal code uh phone number the date of opening uh, what time of fa facility, etc. So you've got you've got the, f the fields that are kind of forced on me. Okay, maybe it's my convention. Maybe it's the fields I need. Maybe it's not. Okay, so we are going to ingest this file as we did in the very first series when we just opened a CSV file, and we are going to start modifying that and look at the schema. Okay, so here let's let's get out of numbers. Okay, numbers. Bye bye. Okay cancel this and now that you've got seen the data we are going to um, we are going to look at the code okay, so I'm going to run the application and now we're going to we're, we are going to look at the application a little bit after so let's start it as usual a uh, little boot time for spark Time to get a sip of coffee. And now it's and now it's working. Okay. So let's magnify this thing and let's have a look at the data. Okay, so right after the injection of my file, you, you, you see the data, which is very similar than the data I showed you in numbers before. Okay. Uh you've got the object ID, the agency ID the name address one address two no one does not uh city state postal code and phone number open date the date etc etc okay if I, I i can ask spark to give me the schema okay as um as uh as it can actually detect the schema and well actually you can use the schema that i'm going to use okay so here you look at the schema, you've got a root, and under the root, you've got all my columns, okay? You've got object ID, HSID, etc. You find an object ID, HSID name, okay? And and what you can see is the type that Spark is is going to use uh, in, this, um, in this context. So this is really looking at a data frame, okay? I've I've ingested my data in a data frame, and those are the column of my data frame. The second operation I'm doing is, as I told you, is I am going to rename my columns here. Um, and the way I'm doing that is, uh, well, I'm going to use a data frame API, and we're going to see that, but you see that, okay, I've got a data set ID, uh, which is, um, as the ID of the restaurant in this data set, the name, address one, address two, city, etc. So I didn't change that much, but I just wanted to be consistent uh, along, along the top, okay? And if I want to filter, like drop columns, and you can see here, I can actually do that. Just name, city, state, uh, type, county, and the ID. And I'm going to show you this ID here, okay? Uh, because you see this ID here, uh, here, it, it was not in the original it was not in the original numbers document okay so if I go back to my numbers uh, to my numbers document here you you see that this column here at the end of it is does not exist okay I've got I've got X and y uh, which I turn out to be GOX and GOY I have the county column here as well okay county column uh, which is which is not there, yeah, because this is assuming that it's coming from Wake, sorry, uh, Friday mornings, and then I've got an ID, okay? And we, we'll, we'll, we'll see some justification of that uh, a little later, but I'm going to explain you how to do that. And now when I'm looking at the result, uh, at this one, at the resulting schema here, you see that I've got a dataset ID, which is the ID within the dataset, 
the name, address one, address two, city, state, all this way. Um, and I have the county here, which is a new column, and I've got the ID as well. Okay. And then we're going to look at the partition. Um, I can, and, and that, that's, that's a little bit more advanced, but we're going to look uh, quickly at that. Okay. So let's drill into the code and try to understand the code of what is happening here. Um, so let's, let's look at the import. Um, you are seeing here that we are statically importing two uh, methods or function. Um, I will call them function from now on. And this is concatenate. Okay, we'll see that. And that's a kind of usual business like uh, my, my Spark session, my row, my data set, and of course, my, uh, my partition. Okay. Uh, okay, so you know the drill. Um, I like instances, so I just did a new instance. And let's go to the start of the code. Okay. In here, in this scenario, look at look at what what is going is happening here okay i'm creating a session i uh, you've seen that before uh this is my amp name okay uh my master being local and i create i get it or create it fine now i can actually import my uh my csv files the only thing i'm going to ask spark here is to hey spark there is a header okay there is a header i know there is a header uh and uh, and uh, just just import it, and you can actually do that, or you can do, um, or you can do that. It's it's really up to you. It's it's working exactly the same way. I, I like the second one better, but you know I started with that, and 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 that's uh, that's how it is. Okay, so right after ingestion, I am going to show the five uh, first records and the the schema. Okay, and also counting the number of records. Uh, so if we go back there at the very beginning of our of our transformation this is my five records right after inf uh, right after ingestion uh my schema right after um ingestion and it's counting 344 th uh, sorry 3440 re uh, restaurants in this data set okay fair enough so now I can start transforming my data frame and specifically the metadata of my data frame. Okay. So first I'm adding this column. If you remember, I'm adding this column called county. Okay. And that's, um, you see this, this method lit here, which is taking a literal value in this scenario, wake for wake county, and it's going to add it to the data set. Uh, and then as the, the next thing I'm doing is I am adding, I'm renaming this ID to data set ID, then the name, uh, to name, the address ID, the address to address, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. All this thing, this restaurant open date, big, huge field. I'm going to call it date start. Uh, yeah, like postal code. I'm, I'm calling it zip, zip, zip code is a copyright of USPS. So just just to mention copyright and not do a copyright infringements. Okay. And there's two columns, which I don't really care about. It's object ID, permit ID, and geo code status. So I'm just dropping them. Okay. So to create a column in a data frame, you can use with column. That's a very, very, very fancy uh, column. You give the name of it, and then you get a value of what is going to be in the column. In this scenario, it was lit. You we will see other examples. Uh, with column renamed allows me to rename a column. Okay. I'm taking a column, old name, new name, easy peasy. Uh, and then drop allows me to drop some columns, which are columns that I, I don't, I don't need. Um, and if you remember, I had also this column called ID at the end and ID is using another function here, another of the spark function called concat. And with concat, what I'm going to do is. Uh, the first part of my concatenation is going to be the state, okay, which was NC, uh, then a literal, then the county, the county I just created here, okay, uh, and and then after I'm adding another literal, uh, another underscore, and then the data set ID, okay. So this creates for me a unique identifier of the uh, of the of the uh, of the restaurant. Okay. So let me see here. 
uh, this is a result here for this restaurant, uh, the column that I've been added, uh, that I added, wake, and the unique identifier, which is the nc underscore wake underscore um, 04, blah, blah, blah. So if, imagine I'm, I'm building uh, a data set of all the restaurants in the United States, for example, this creates my unique ID for this place, which is Waba on Ellsboro Street. Probably have to go there once. Um, okay, and uh, then the, as I'm just displaying right now, I'm showing exactly the transform data frame. And uh, well, we'll skip that. That's, that's kind of the sub small data frame I did here, just dropping more columns to have a, a more condensed view here. And then I'm printing the schema of, uh, of this transformed data set here. Okay, and then here, I'm going to move that a little bit higher so we can see. See, you see that I've got a data set, the name, and all these things here. Uh, and and that's, that's it for now. So you see that my, my data sets, uh, my, my field, sorry, in my data frame are all strings. Okay, it's because I didn't want to bother. Um, I could date, date could be a real date, okay? In this scenario, we're not going to do much more than that. So there's no really need to transform more uh, or to tell Spark what data type it is. Uh, my ID is a string, as a little as you've seen. My county is a string. Uh, the geo coordinates should be should be uh, should be uh, real numbers, uh, uh, float or double. Uh, the type is is a, is a, is, a, is a string for sure. Date start should be a date. Okay, but. Um, uh, um, and telephone could be, could be, should be a string zip because the zip code is in the U S it's five. We've got a mix of five and additional four. So that's typically a string. Um, same thing for state zip, etc. Okay. So, so that's, uh, uh, and in this special case, actually data set ID could be a number because I think it's a number. Um, yep. Okay. And the last thing we're going to do in this example in this lab, this is uh, lab 200 from chapter three, is look at the partitions, okay? Uh, if Spark, we, we are going, the API we used here is really the data frame API. It's a very easy API. It's a very um, uh, um, powerful API. And it's also combining directly access to the storage. So there's this really this nice, thing uh, uh and i i love the, the the data frame and the i call it majestic in in a lot of cases and as as you know the whole book covers that but everybody using spark is uh is aware of of, of the powerful of that and the law under the the under the, um, the data frame there is another layer ah let's let's draw let, let's draw a little bit okay sorry i so as you can say, as you can, as you see, we, we use a data frame, okay? And the data frame is really a very powerful API uh, within Spark. And it comes, I would say it's really what, what would be really on, on top of everything. So it is both an, an API, a very powerful API, as I said, and the storage itself, okay? So it gives you access to the storage. It's not really the storage itself. Uh, the actually what, what what is happening is under the data frame you will see uh rdds okay so it's a it's a lower level um it's a lower level container uh of data it has its own api as well uh, so the rdd stands for resilient resilient uh, resilient distributed data set and the it has an api as well it's storage as well but um and it's it's actually not being used that it's it's not being advised to be used anymore uh the data frame is a more powerful api it's also by providing an io level of abstraction can be can optimize your processing much in a much nicer way and you've got performance gained by using the data frame so in some cases, you would say that, oh, by going lower level, I would have better performance. In this case, it's not, okay? So stick to the data frame. For some operations, 
um, you will still have to have access to the RDDs. So that's, that's why we're, we're looking at that today. Um, now, if, if, I'm, uh, if I'm looking at what is under my RDD, is I have, I have, um, I have partitions, okay? So I have, I have my partitions where data is being, you know, split based on storage, based on source, based on, on whatever. It, the system decides how uh, the data is being partitioned. So it's not, you are not deciding that unless you explicitly ask Spark to partition it in a in certain way. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, okay? Here in our situation, which is a really kind of a really normal basic scenario with a limited number of records, um, we actually have, we don't have this at all. We have, um, we have only one partition okay one partition um containing our 344 uh restaurants uh from the top of my head okay so this is this scenario what i'm doing now is i'm basically saying hey spark i don't want i don't want that i want four partition okay so uh my 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 data frame through my rdds is going to repartition that to uh one two three for partition and why am i doing that is i could do that for many reasons i want to export individual partition i want to have processing an individual partition i want to work only on one partition if uh if i want to filter data etc etc okay or joins or whatever so so but this but this is out of what we're doing to talk today so really uh this is very this is this is a kind of stuff so now if if i'm if i'm uh um, going back to my code, um, you can see here that in my scenario, um, I'm calling the RDD method of the um, of the data frame, uh, and through the RDD, I'm actually uh, getting the partition method, which returns an array of partitions. Then the easy thing is I'm counting them. Okay, so it's a, it's a it's a basic array. So I'm just looking at the length property um, and printing the uh the the return here the the number of the count of partition now i'm asking spark to repartition my data to four as i just uh illustrated it and basically what happens is if i'm doing exactly the same thing you see that it's going to print four okay so the result you've got my result here so before partition it's one after repartition it's four so that's concluding uh, today's lab. This was lab 200 from chapter three of Sparks in, Spark in Action, second edition, which is now available in its final form. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please subscribe. If you did, please tell me so. If you did not, well, you can still subscribe because more is coming and you can tell me what you would like to see. The best way to reach me is at Twitter at JG Perrin, okay? Thanks guys. Thanks, guys. Have a wonderful weekend and see you next Friday at 8 a.m. Eastern uh, for another episode of Data Friday. Bye now. Take care.